Don't sleep on this featherweight contest between Dan 50 k Ige and Josh Emmett. And these dudes are going to come to absolutely bang right away. Something that jumps uh, out to me is the odds. I'm noticing Josh Emmett is a pretty decent favorite in this one. Uh, he, <clears throat> excuse me, has fallen down to minus 160, but he opened at an, uh, <clears throat> minus 225. And are you at all surprised by that early action and the fact that it was that drastic to begin with? Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I think it is pretty drastic uh, to begin with that, but I think this should be honestly a 50-50. I mean, Dan Ike is no joke, but Josh Emmett, he's been looking real strong, very powerful for his division, so I kind of see why people are pretty bullish on him. Um, he hasn't fought in a while, though, so it really depends on how he heals up from that injury. And I think I'm going to go with Josh. You know, I like uh, the momentum he's got, the power he's got, the only thing I wonder is if he can really hang with Dan Ige because Dan Ige is a warrior and has so much experience and is just such a good technical fighter. Josh is going to want to make it really gritty and brutal and keep in his face and try to keep it up. You don't want to go to the ground, in my opinion. Um, Dan Ige is just too technical and good. But I think if Josh can use his power, absolutely bully Dan Ige, I think he can get it done KO. Yeah, great stuff. And, you know, the last time we saw Dan Ige, he lost a decision to Korean Zombie. That was back in June. And you touched on that long layoff of Emmett. I mean, it's been almost it's been over a year and a half since we saw him versus Shane Burgos in what was an absolute classic. Those dudes came to bang. He did get the unanimous victory in that one. But it's been a little bit while. Uh, it's been a little while. And you mentioned the ACL surgery that he's recovering from. Uh, and Dan Ige being no easy re-entry uh, to the UFC. So should be interesting. Dan Ige, you mentioned a guy that can, you know, really mix it up. He's uh, He can beat you on the ground. Uh, he's got those slick technical submissions like you mentioned. And he's a guy who can strike as well as evidenced by that one-punch flatline over Gavin Tucker. Uh, that was early. And uh, his hands really look pretty crisp in that one. So what are your thoughts on what Ige's pathway to victory would be and do you see this playing out on the feet for uh, around a couple rounds, or is Ige, you know, from the get, gonna try and get this thing to the mat? You know, I think it's gonna stay on the feet. I don't know if Ige can even take him to the ground. Mm -hmm. I could see him attempting it, especially if things start to not go his way. But I think Josh is very strong. Um, very strong and big for his division, so I don't think he'll have any trouble on stuffing or just overpowering him. The only thing I worry about is, um, you know, is Dan Ige and then Josh's gas tank. I mean, I don't see either one of these guys gassing, but if one maybe does, I could see Josh in the later rounds and Dan maybe, you know, overcomes. It all depends on how many takedowns Dan attempts and if Josh can stuff all those and not gas out. But I think Josh you know he locks this one down i think he's just the the better stronger uh more powerful fighter and i think that's is what what's needed to win this matchup yeah i like this one a lot i think it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh it's a great return fight for josh emmett it's the ufc saying like yo this is we saw you in that top caliber and there are no steps backwards so uh and for Ige, it's a great opportunity because josh emmett is coming in off a nice win streak He's got some finishes over Mirsad Bektik, Michael Johnson. Like He has some nice wins and has never looked better. So uh, great matchmaking nonetheless. But I'm actually going to roll with Dan Ige. I think he's going to find a way to get this one done. Uh, I sort of envision Josh Emmett having you know such a massive size advantage. But Ige is going to have an inch on him. He's got a little bit of reach on him. And granted, they are kind of built differently. Josh Emmett is you know just a, uh, a bulk powerhouse. Uh, I just think Ige is going to have the uh, technical skill sets to be able to take this fight where he wants to. And ultimately, I just like the idea of technique uh, usurping strength. And ultimately, Ige, I think, gets some takedowns, wins an ugly decision, and uh, manages to survive those meat bombs from Josh Emmett because we know he's going to be slinging leather. He's going to be trying to absolutely flatline 50K. Uh, but in the end, I think Ige is going to survive get this fight where he wants it to go and ultimately win. Maybe not the uh, most appealing decision, but a decision nonetheless. So I'm be rolling with the dog in this one. I see it as a juicy meat value stake. 71% uh, is rolling with Josh Emmett. However, 29% rolling with your boy and 50K. So any last thoughts uh, on this one? And nonetheless, this should be a straight up scrap. Yeah, straight up scrap. No doubt in that. Uh, make sure to smash that meat, boys, and subscribe. Throw in the comments who you guys got. You got Emmett or you're going with 50K? Throw in the comments. We love hearing from all you guys. Yep.